Well, we've got Abigail Damoa on the line with us here. How are you doing today? Um, great. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to have you on the show today. Now, first of all, you've got a new book coming out on the 28th of January called She Is Risen. But before we talk about the book, can you just tell us a little bit about your story, really, and what led up to you writing a book? In 2014, I was sentenced to 12 years Florida State Prison mm. um, for vehicular homicide. Um, the background to that is that I moved to America um, to study, to further my studies, mm. and I was involved in a road traffic accident where my passenger was killed and I was seriously injured. Mm. Because of my injuries and the, the extent of my injuries, I moved back to the United Kingdom so that I could receive the care that I needed to um, to get back on my feet. And years later, the state of Florida issued a extradition warrant for my arrest. Wow. I ended up serving five years out of the 12 years that I was sentenced. Yeah. And the road traffic accident, was it actually your fault? According to the law, no. Mm. Um, and, and that was a huge issue when it came to me being extradited um, the, road, the, the accident happened on a road that was under reconstruction at the time. And I wasn't familiar with the, 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 the area. And the, all the roadsides had been taken off. Um, so there was no speed signs, neither were there any um, signs that the road was about to, um, to, to, to change structure. Mm. So if you know anything about um, the American uh, traffic system, they, they, their, their version of mot- our motorways are called freeways. Yeah. And the road that I was on at the time, if you're not familiar with it, you will not realise that you're entering an exit ramp. An exit ramp is where you get off to, um, to travel on normal roads. Yeah. But the road had, the, the, sorry, the freeway, the motorway had um, changed into four lanes. So it looked like you're still on the exit ramp. And then it quickly went into one lane and there was a sharp curve. But because wow. there were no speed signs or there were no warning signs that the road was about to change, I wasn't aware of this, slammed on the brakes. Unfortunately, I wasn't quick enough and the accident happened. Mm. Yeah, that's incredible because you would have thought that it's definitely not your fault there. It's poor road management or whatever you want to call it. And because you were seriously injured yourself, it's a little bit rude to try and accuse you of being in the wrong. Exactly. So your book, She Is Risen, is this about your whole story, basically, and about this event? Yes. Um, the, the, you know, even though it was, the, you know, the circumstances were tragic, yeah. somebody in their life and I ended up being incarcerated for five years, um, it was also an awakening for me. Mm. Um, I, I connected to my faith. Um, which is Christianity, Um, and I was able to turn a a negative situation into something positive. Um, Mm. It changed my life for the better. However, there are are legal issues behind um, my extradition that I I would like to challenge now that I'm, I'm free. Yeah. And what are the kind of issues in the extradition treaty that you find? There, there, there are several, but the, mm. the, the one in particular that um, I, I'm, 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 I want to, to lobby the government about is that um, the, the treaty is, is lopsided. So mm. in order for the American government to request the extradition of a, a UK citizen, they need very minimal evidence. Mm. But the other way around for the UK to, for the, sorry, for the, for the so yes, I'm getting for myself here. Yeah. For the U- USA to request evidence, sorry, to um to demand or request that a UK citizen is extradited from um, the United Kingdom, they need very minimal evidence. But for the UK to request that a United States citizen is extradited from America, they need a substantial amount of evidence. Wow. And not only they need a substantial amount of evidence, the US um, government comes through all the evidence to ensure that 
the crime that the person has committed um, matches the definition of the of the crime that the UK is accusing the the perpetrator of, and if it doesn't match, they don't extradite. Yeah. But the UK doesn't have that same privilege. Mm. So when it came to my case, the um, specifics of of, of the, the charge, I'm not a legal expert. Um, mm. But I was able to, with the information that they sent to the UK, I was able to um, do my own research and find out that the, the, according to the legal definition of vehicular homicide in the United States, I was not guilty of a crime. Now, um, the legal definition states that in order to convict a person of vehicular homicide, which is killing of the killing of a human being um, caused by the operation of a motor vehicle it, driven in a reckless manner, likely mm. to cause death or, or great bodily harm to another, the degree of culpability required for vehicular homicide is less than uh, that is necessary to prove manslaughter. Mm. Uh, but vehicular homicide cannot be proven without also proving the elements of reckless driving, which requires proof of a willful or wanton disregard for the safety of persons or property. Mm. So in other words, they needed to have evidence that I intentionally caused this accident. Mm. Yeah, because like the actual name of vehicular homicide implies that it was deliberate but i don't really see how it could have been deliberate and considering the evidence that they presented yeah. that specifically stated it, i mean it was explicitly stated in the in the discovery um that and that a discovery is a full rundown expert rundown of exactly what happened on the day of the accident yeah. and it was stated explicitly that the road was under reconstruction and there were no signs on the road warning the driver that uh, a change there was going to be a change in the structure of the road so we with that alone i should never have been charged with a crime and when it yeah. went to, to trial even though i was found guilty at trial and that's another issue in terms of um how the the, the trial um, was orchestrated um i was then um the case was then dismissed by the fourth district court of appeals based on that evidence alone yeah so my argument is that Prior to me being extradited to the United States, this evidence should have been looked at by the government here to ensure that the crime that they were accusing me of, the evidence that they had presented was in line with it. Yeah. And it wasn't. Yeah. And what do you think should be done to fix all these issues with extradition and the whole idea of being found guilty but then later it's kind of overturned now i'm not asking the government to scrap the extradition treaty yeah. um but what i am requesting is that the law is changed in regards to um whatever case is put before the courts mm. um, that the evidence that the united states provides is sufficient according to their own law and i don't think that's too much to ask for considering the fact that in my case they got it completely wrong yeah. Additionally, when I returned to the United Kingdom after serving a five-year prison sentence for a crime that I didn't commit, I didn't receive a penny in compensation yeah. from the state of Florida because the state of Florida have established laws to protect themselves against wrongful conviction lawsuits. Mm. So I was shut out of any financial assistance there. But to make matters worse, the United Kingdom has no compensation system set up for British citizens who have been falsely accused of a crime, extradited to America, and then exonerated. So there needs to be some uh, form of compensation system in place so that other people like myself can re-establish themselves in society um, without having to struggle. Mm. Because I, I, I went through... I went through a lot just to regain my footing. And it, it took me a while. I mean, I, I returned back to the United Kingdom in, in, in 2016. This was a very lengthy case. It started in 2011. Mm. But it's taken me up till now to be able to come forward with this because I've had to re-establish myself. Yeah, mm, absolutely. And it just feels like it should be a normal thing to receive compensation if you've been spending time in prison when you shouldn't have. But yeah, that's not the case. 
no yeah it's not the case and i've 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 written to um I've written to the Home Secretary, I've written to 10 Downing Street, yeah. and I haven't received any response from from um, from any um, from any of the, of the correspondents that I've written. Yeah. And I, I would I would like someone to, to, to pay attention to this issue mm. because the extradition treaty is still in effect and they're still extraditing people today. So mm. I believe that this is something that needs to be challenged. Mm. So your book is going to be pre-released on the 28th of January and it's called She Has Risen. And in the meantime, we can contact you on the website and social media as well, right? What are your social media handles and the website link? So my website is www.abigaildemoa.com and social media, Facebook and um, Instagram is Abigail Demoa Official and then Twitter is Abigail underscore Demoa. Great. Well, thanks very much for coming on the show today. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you for having me.